What's up everyone, Patrick here. Welcome back. Moving on to another question dealing with quadratics. So we're told a ball is thrown off a roof and its height in meters relative to time in seconds is modeled by h equals negative 0.8 t minus 4 squared plus 26. And we have two questions. We have to find how high is the roof and then part b, how long is the ball in the air? And for part b, we have to show it or we have to solve it in two different ways. So notice here we have a quadratic that's in vertex form in this particular case. So how high is the roof? Well, if we start off with a drawing here, this is time and then this is height. Well, how high is the roof going to be? It's going to be over here. That's where the ball is going to be thrown off. And if we draw this, it's going to be a quadratic that looks like this. Now this vertex we're given, it's 4 and 26 because the quadratic is in vertex form in this particular case. Right? And it's a quadratic that opens down because the a value here is negative. And so now to find how high this roof is, we just plug in 0 for t because that's the initial height that the ball is thrown off. There's no seconds that have gone by yet. So we would plug in 0 for t and then we'd have negative 0.8 times 16 plus 26, which would give us uh, 0 0.8 time, negative 0 0.8 times 16 would give us negative 12 0.8 plus 26. It would give us 13.2. So that is the initial height. This coordinate here is 0 and 13.2. 13.2 meters is how high the roof is. Now, part B, this is where the bulk of the work is going to be. How long is the ball in the air? Well, we have to solve when is it going to hit the ground, right? That amount of time, that's how long the ball is in the air for. So to solve for this point, notice that the height is zero at this point. So we're going to solve for some kind of T value and then finding when the height, that T value, when the height is zero. So we would plug in zero for H and then solve for T. Now there's actually, because this is in vertex form, there's two different ways to solve this equation here. We can directly solve here for t, isolate for the t by bringing the 26 over, dividing by negative 0.8, et cetera, et cetera. So that's one of the ways. The other way is we can expand everything and then use the quadratic formula. And so what we would do is we have to take this in order to put it into that quadratic formula, we got to get the standard form. So we have to expand everything over here. So we'd have t squared minus 8t plus 16 plus 26 like that. So we'd end up with negative 0.8t squared plus 6.4t. Negative 0.8 times 16 would give us what? It's the um, negative 12.8 plus 26. And so we end up with negative 0.8. You know what? I'm going to actually write that. Let me just double check that everything's right. It looks fine to me. So I'm going to write that up here just to give us some room for using that quadratic formula. So we'll have negative 0.8t squared plus 6.4t. Then negative 12.8 plus 26 would give us positive 13.2. And it makes sense that we got a c value. Notice that this is now in standard form. And remember the c value of a standard form quadratic ax squared plus bx plus c, the c value is always going to be that y-intercept, or in this case, the h-intercept. So it makes sense that we got 13.2 right there as well. And now we have a quadratic equation where the quadratics in standard form, notice the a value is negative 0.8, the b value is 6.4, and then the c value is 13.2. We can now take those, plug it into that quadratic formula, which is uh, negative b plus or minus b squared minus 4ac all over 2a like that. And so we just have to now plug in these parameters, so negative 6.4 plus or minus, then we'll have b squared 6.4 squared minus 4 times negative 0.8 times the c value 13.2 all over 2 times the a value of negative 0.8. So lots of decimals to work with. We're going to do all of this algebra. And when you do all of this algebra, this here is what it would be. 
So you would end up having 83.2 under the square root. So square rooting that plus or minus 9.12. And so you'll get two different solutions there. You'll either get 9.7 or negative 1.7. And so notice that this negative value we're going to ignore there because time can't be negative. But if you were to extend this quadratic, that's where that negative 1.7 would be. And then the positive 9.7, that's over here. Right, so that ends up being the um, answer to part B. How long is the ball in the air? 9.7 seconds. And we did it one way here with the quadratic formula. We had to expand this and then plug in those parameters from the standard form into the quadratic formula. Also, one thing I want to mention, notice that these numbers make sense because the axis of symmetry we know is 4, that x value of the vertex. And notice that 4 is in the middle of 9.7 and negative 1.7. If I take 9.7 plus negative 1.7, and if I divide it by 2, this would be what? 8 over 2, which would give us 4. So that's a nice quick little check that you can do. If you're given a problem like this where it's given in vertex form, you have to find the intercepts. Well, you could see if the midpoint between the intercepts is indeed going to give you that given axis of symmetry or that given x value of the vertex. All right, so this is one way to do it. So we got those values. Let's see if we get the same values with the other way. So the other way what we would do, we would bring the, um, the negative 26 over. So we'll have negative 26 over here, then we'll have negative 0.8 t minus 4 squared. Then we could divide both sides by negative 0.8. This would be 32.5. Then we'll have t minus 4 squared. Then to get rid of this exponent 2, we could just square root both sides. Square root of 32.5 is going to be approximately plus or minus 5.7. And then we'll have a t value, or sorry, not a t value, a t minus 4 like that. Okay, so notice two different solutions. We'll either have positive, sorry, we'll either have positive 5.7 here, which is going to equal t minus 4. When we bring the 4 over, we'll get a t value of 9.7. Or we'll have negative 5.7 equals t minus 4. Bring the negative 4 over, t would be negative 1.7, like that. So we got the exact same solutions, but doing it more directly. So this way I feel like is a little bit quicker, but it's not the most proper way to quote unquote do it. Your teacher may require you for something like this to expand everything, put it through the quadratic formula and get those values, right? But this is another way you can do it. And maybe if your teacher doesn't allow this way, well, you could use this way maybe on a test if you have the extra time to quickly check your solutions, making sure that those solutions you got with the formula are the same. All right, so that's it for this question. How high is the roof? 13.2 meters. How high is the, or uh, for how long is the ball in the air? 9.7 seconds.